Aleluia. Glory to God forever. I can feel the joy of the Holy Ghost in this atmosphere. Can you celebrate the Lord? Oh, Jesus. Shouts of joy and rejoicing is in the tent of the righteous. The Bible says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound of the Lord. He said, They shall walk in the light of His countenance. The light of God's countenance is the presence of God. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound of the Lord. They shall walk in the light of his continent. Can you celebrate the Lord? Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your matchless presence. Thank you for your undeniable presence. Jesus will give you glory. Can you in one minute just thank him? Thank you for the second day of camp meeting 2022. Thank you for your word that has been coming forth. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your abundant grace. Oh, thank you for the supply of your spirit tonight. Thank you for your word that lightens our paths. Thank you for your word that illuminates our hearts. Thank you for transformation by the ministry of the word and the spirit. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord, we welcome you tonight. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in this atmosphere. Thank you for lives that are being transformed. Thank you for the anointing of your presence. Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost? Oh, Spirit of God, we thank you. We love you, Lord Jesus. You mean everything to us. Breathe upon us again. We look unto you, Yahweh. We look unto you, Spirit of the living God. Palia Sosa, Sila Cabrandisca, Beleni no Sesaliga Vradas. Have you not heard, has it not been told you, that the everlasting God, the Lord of the ends of the earth, neither faint nor is weary? For there is no searching of his understanding. For he giveth power to the weak and to they that have no might, he increaseth strength. For even the youth shall run and be weary and shall utterly faint. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father, we thank you. We are mounting up this night. We are mounting up with wings as eagles this weekend. Send your word once again. And clothe us with the mantle of your spirit. And let our lives be changed forever. Let the yokes be broken tonight. Let an impartation of grace come upon our life. Let there be a supernatural shift by the Holy Ghost in every life tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And we vow to give you the glory now and forever. And let the people of God say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I want to say thank you so much for the Father, the angel over this house, God's own man. Reverend Yolu, thank you so much. And thank you, Mommy. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be here again. Thank you for the privilege to be here in this year's camp meeting to bring God's word for us. Amen. And to Pastor Emeka and all our precious pastors, thank you so much. Thank you, every one of us, for 
the privilege to be here. Can we please have our seat in God's presence? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, God is doing something precious with us. There's a revival of faith that the Spirit of God is bringing upon His people. Jesus said, When the Son of Man shall come, shall He find faith in the earth? God is seeking for a people of faith, a people that will believe His word, a people that will go forth in the fullness of the provision of redemption and do the works of Jesus and become all that he has called them to be. Um, we're talking about limitless possibilities. There's so much that, can you please just reduce the volume so that I can at least teach and preach. <laughs> Amen. There'll be time to fly. But just, I didn't say you should stop playing. Just reduce the volume. God is raising the people who know the power of his spirit, the people who know the provisions that he has made for us in Christ Jesus, the people who can walk in the fullness of his redemption. And so as we journey with God, it's important for us to understand the power of faith. You know, I came in and I, I saw um, God's servant teaching about faith. You see, the subject of faith cannot be overemphasized. We must teach the people of God to live by faith. To understand what faith truly is. If we are going to walk in the realm of limitless possibilities, we must know that faith is the gateway to that realm. And we must understand how to activate this power that God has made available for every one of us. Amen. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, Jesus was speaking, and the Bible says, And Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men, This is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And in Luke chapter 9, sorry, Mark chapter 9, verse 23, the Bible also said, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And then you also see in Luke chapter 18, verse 37, Jesus still saying, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And so we are serving a God who is limitless in his possibilities. We are serving a God who can do all things. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27 tells us, God himself saying, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? God has to put, had to put the world to there because of the unbelief of men. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? So God is a God of all possibilities. With God, all things are possible. And Jesus also says, for all things are possible to him that believe. All things are possible with God. But for the man that would dare to believe God, for the man that would dare to exercise his faith towards God, the Bible says, to such a man also, all things are possible. So the things that are possible with God can be made possible with men. And what connects us to the possibilities of God, to the ability of God to make all things possible in our lives or through our lives is that we believe in the word of God. We believe in what God has said. We believe in the power of God to cause change. With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, all things are possible. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul says, For I have been crucified with Christ, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. 
and the life that I live in this body, in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So the new creation was designed by God to live by faith. The new creation was designed by God to live by faith. And so Paul said, I am living by the faith of the Son of God. So we are designed to live by the faith of the Son of God because God himself is a God of faith. God works by faith. The Bible in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 tells us, it says, so by faith we understand that the whole world was framed by the word of God. Verse 6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For everyone that comes to God must believe that God is, must believe that God exists, and must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God does not just exist. God rewards the people that seek him. God rewards the man that believes in his word. He says, for I have not called the seeds of Jacob to seek me in vain. So every time a man seeks God in faith, the scripture tells us that God will reward the faith of that man. God rewards the faith of man. He wants us to live by faith. Four places in the Bible, in Hebrew, um, I'm sorry, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. In Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says that just shall live by faith. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, the scripture says that just shall live by faith. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, the scripture says that just shall live by faith. The just, the man who has been justified, the man who has been made righteous in Christ Jesus, must live by faith. He lives his life by faith. What powers the life of a new creation, of the righteous in Christ Jesus, is faith. The just shall live by faith. He says, if any man turns back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. God called us to live by faith. God created us as new creation in Christ Jesus to live by faith. Anything outside of faith is not accepted by God. That's why Romans chapter 14 verse 23 says whatever is not of faith is sin. So anything you do as a new creation outside of the jurisdiction of faith, the Bible says is a sin. Because you were designed to live by faith. You were designed to be a creature of faith. It is by faith that we understand that the whole world was framed, was brought into being, into existence by the very word of God. So our, our dealings, our fellowship with God is by faith. The just shall live by faith. God designed us to live by faith. He created us to function by faith because God is a God of faith. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 tells us that Abraham believed God when God spoke to him, when God gave him a, pro a, a, um, um, a promise. Abraham believed God. Even the God who quickens the dead. How? By calling the things that be not as though they were. Abraham believed God because God is a God of faith. He can speak to call the things that be not as though they were. He can give life to the dead. There is no impossibility with God. He can do all things. He can give life to the dead. He's a God of faith. And he calls us to relate with him by faith. And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us. He said faith is the substance. It's the substantiating. That's what it actually means. It's the substantiating of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So because we don't see God physically. God is not flesh and blood. We will need to live and fellowship with God by faith. Everything that God says, we must have that substance in our heart if it's going to manifest in our hands. God is a God of faith. He calls us to be creature of faith. He says the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith. So if you are going to become all that God has called you to be, you must understand that faith is critical in your work with God. 
Faith is what pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Whatever is not of faith is sin. So God wants you to build your faith. And Romans chapter 12 verse 3 tells us, it says, for God dealt with every man the measure of faith. He has dealt with every man. He has given every man the measure of faith. So when you heard the gospel preach, God gave you a measure of faith. That's why you could believe the gospel and be saved. So he has given every man the measure of faith. Every new creation in Christ Jesus has the measure of faith in his spirit. But you see, it becomes our responsibility to develop our faith, to grow our faith if we are going to live in victory. First John chapter 5 verse 4 tells us that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our faith is the victory. It is by faith that we overcome the world. It is by faith that we subdue the powers of this world. It is by faith that we walk with God. Everything about our walk with God is built on faith. The jaws shall live by his faith. And faith for a new creation is not something you are trying to have. God has planted the seed of faith in your heart and he gives you the responsibility to nurture the faith. He gives you the responsibility to feed your faith and to grow your faith. And so when you, when you read through the gospel, even though Jesus was dealing with unregenerated people, you will see there were different levels of faith that the people had. At some point, he will, say, he will, he will rebuke their unbelief. At some point, he will say, Oh, you men of little faith. At some point, he will say, I have not seen such great faith, not in Israel. When he was dealing with the Syrophoenician woman, when he was dealing with the centurion, it's amazing that the people that Jesus mentioned in the gospel for having great faith were not even Jews. They were Gentiles. And the account for which Jesus said they had great faith was because they were exercising their faith not just for themselves but for others. The highest level of the expression of your faith is for you to nurture your faith to the point where you can use your faith to help others. At that level, Jesus commends such people for having great faith. So God wants us to grow the, our faith. As new creation, the faith of the Son of God is already in us. Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the very faith of God that created the universe is what God has given to me. But you see, it came in a seed form. But it's my responsibility to grow it. It's my responsibility to nurture the faith of God in my spirit until it begins to bring forth fruit. When you plant a seed, you will need to nurture that seed if the seed is going to bring forth harvest. So our work with God is a work of faith. God has planted his faith in our heart, but he gives us the responsibility to nurture it because God is pleased when he sees faith. Faith is our, is our currency for transaction in the realm of the spirit. If you are going to do business with God in the spirit realm, faith becomes your currency, your legal tender, your purchasing power for transaction in the realm of the spirit. It is by faith that we engage the spirit realm. It is by faith that we do business in the realm of the spirit. Faith is our purchasing power. Faith is our, is our currency for transaction in the realm of the spirit. Everything we do is by faith. You got born again by faith. You walk with God by faith. You see, my coming here, I'm believing that as I minister, God will bless you, the power of God will touch you, God will do things in your life. It's by faith. Everything about our work with God is by faith. The seed of faith is in your heart. But if you are going to walk in the realm of limitless possibilities, you need to grow your faith. You need to build your faith. You need to pay attention to your faith. Because what heart failure is to the human body is what faith failure is to your entire life. In Luke chapter 22 verse 31, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, Peter, 
For Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that what? That your faith faileth not. He said, when thou hast converted, strengthen your brethren. I pray for you that your faith will not fail. It's a Satan is desiring to sift you as wheat. But my prayer for you is that your faith will not fail. Why is Jesus talking about your faith? Because it's by faith that will please God. It's by faith that will engage God into our affairs. It's also by faith that will resist the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. He said, taking the shield of faith by which you will do what? Quench all the fiery that." Of the wicked one so every arrow that the enemy is throwing at you is by faith that you are going to quench it faith is also a defensive weapon for a believer faith your faith in god shields you from the darts the wiles of the wicked one so jesus is saying i am already seeing that the devil is going to launch an attack against you peter he wants to sift you as wheat. But my prayer for you is that your faith will not fail. God wants you as a believer to pay attention on the subject of faith. You see, faith is not just confession the way many people think. Faith is deeper than that. Anybody can confess. But faith is deeper than that. If you are going to build your faith as a believer to walk in the realm of limitless possibility, you must go on what diet and prayer dream. What diet and prayer dream. If you want to be a faith giant, if you want to see the possibilities of God in your life, you must pay attention to the word. My son, give attention to my word. You want to build faith in God. You want to see the possibilities of God begins to break out of your life. You must build your faith through the word and through prayer. There is no way you are going to be a giant in the spirit. There is no way you are going to be strong and come into the realm where the things that were not possible with you before becomes possible now without you consciously developing your faith power. When we look at the apostolic templates in the book of Acts, you will find out that the apostles were consumed with four things. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 tells us. It said they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. I like the word there. It didn't say prayer. It said prayers. It means they gave themselves to all kinds of prayer. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. What's that? In the teaching of the word. They labored in the word to equip the people. There is no way you're going to walk in the realm of possibility, in the realm of the supernatural, without paying attention to the word. You see, in the body of Christ, it's as though there is a divide in many camps. There are people who, who boast and say, we are the word-based people. Some people say, we are the praying people. But you see, either side that you decide to, 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 to fix your tent, you are in error. If you choose to just be a praying person without the word, you are already tending towards error. If you choose to be a word person out of prayer, you are already in error. That modus cannot, cannot bring about the advancement of the kingdom in a territory. But you see, some people want to choose the word. We are the word-based people. They know the Greeks and Hebrews. Homiletics. But their prayer life is weak. You want to be strong in the spirit, you must labor in the word. That was the models of the apostles. They were given to the word and to prayer. Why? Because if we're going to experience transformation and the move of God, we must understand the place of the word and the spirit. Prayer is what creates the structure, the platform for the move of the spirit. And what the apostles were busy with was that they were busy with the word and with prayer. 
they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayer. And the Bible says, fear came upon the people, and many signs and wonders were wrought by the hands of the apostles. So if we want to see the supernatural, the possibilities of God abounding in our lives and in our generation, we must go back to the apostolic model. How did they raise the early church? So that guys like Philip and Stephen, who were part of the seven being numbered as deacons, began to do the very works they saw the apostles do. God wants us to upgrade our spiritual curriculum. Our syllabus for raising the people of God must be, must be, must be improved. The outbreak of the Holy Spirit, the move of God that is captured in the book of Acts is because the apostles and the believers were diligent in the word and in prayer. They didn't choose one. Some Christians would rather choose one. Some people would choose to be word people. Some people would choose to be praying people. But the accurate model is to choose the way of the word and prayer. Acts chapter 6 verse 4 the apostle said we will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word you can see that chapter 2 verse 42 the word was mentioned before prayer in chapter 6 verse 4 prayer was mentioned before the word you will always see the word and prayer prayer and the word going on as model for accurate building of the people of God prayer and the word you can't choose one you can't choose one at the expense of the other. You want to be a giant of faith. You want to be strong in the spirit. You want to break forth into the realm of limitless possibilities. You must be married to the word and to prayer. That's how the Holy Spirit is going to find a structure in your life to work with. They gave themselves continually to prayer, to the word. So we want to be strong. We want to be people of prayer. The model has been set. We must give ourselves to word diet. Feed your spirit with the word. Feed your spirit with the word. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us. It says, for faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. The second hearing is the hearing of understanding. Faith comes by hearing and by understanding the word of God. Faith is not truly really born in the heart of a man that does not understand the word. That's why in the parable of the sower, the first category was the category of the people who heard the word and because they did not understand it, the devil came and stole the word from them. So a man who does not labor on, on the word to the point of understanding will not grow in his faith work. So Paul said faith comes by hearing and by understanding of the word of God. The psalmist says, for the entrance of that world, give it light and understanding to the simple. So if faith is going to grow in your heart, if you are going to build the capacity to venture into deep waters and see a new level, a new horizon of the possibilities of God break forth in your life, you must labor in the world. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, it says, be diligent, study, to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You must study the word of God to know the word, to understand the word, and to know how to apply the word in your life. Because the basis for faith is the word of God. You cannot have faith or something that is not captured within the context of the will of God. And it is the word of God that brings us into an understanding of the word of God. If your understanding of the world is deficient, it's going to affect your faith. John said this is the confidence we have that when we pray according to his will, he hears us. And because he hears us, we know that our petition is granted to us. What is the will of God? The word of God. So you want to grow your faith for the supernatural? 
you want to grow your faith to function in the realm of limitless possibility, you must labor in the world. You must give attention to the world. You must study the world, understand the world. For every aspect of your life where you want to see results, you must sit down with the book, sit down with the word, and find out what the word of God has to say. In any area of your life as a believer that you notice that you are not having results, you are struggling, is an area that the light of the word of God is not shining enough. Or an area of, the life, of your life where the light of the word of God is not even seen at all. So if you are a believer, you are struggling with your health, for instance. And you want to walk in divine health. And you want to become God's conduit to bring his healing power to his people. You must stay with the word. You must understand what is the will of God as far as healing is concerned. As that understanding dawns in your heart, faith will come alive. Faith will grow in your life. And you can enter into the, the resources of God as far as healing and health is concerned. But you see, the understanding you have for healing is not going to automatically cover for finances and prosperity. So you can be, you can be healthy and be poor. You can have the revelation of prosperity. Maybe you have a teacher, a pastor, who shows you all the scripture there is in the world about prosperity. He teaches you about giving sacrificially and seed sowing and all of that. And you master the principle, the light of God as far as prosperity and finances is concerned, has done in your heart. You begin to engage it, you will prosper. But you see, if you do not have a revelation of the holiness of God because you have not stayed with the word of God to experience the sanctifying power of the word of God, you can be prosperous and be a callous believer. So there are people who have learned the principles of prosperity and it's working for them. They know how to sow seed. When they have challenges, they know how to do all of that. But they have not known how to tame the flesh. The devil is still Lord as far as their flesh is concerned. They are still loose sexually. They have not understood how to gain victory and dominion over the works of the flesh. They have not understood the sanctifying power of the word. Jesus says, sanctify them by thy word, for thy word is truth. Jesus said, for thy sake, I have sanctified myself so that you also shall be sanctified. So as a believer, when you sanctify yourself by the knowledge of the truth, the people who hear you will come under the sanctifying power of the word. So in any area of your life where you want to gain victory, where you want to see the power of God, the possibilities of God breaking forth in your life, you must find out what the word has to say. In this day and time that social media is telling Christians all kinds of things, all kinds of views on marriage, whether polygamy is okay or is not, what does the word have to say? The word of God is our template. The word of God is our operational manual. We are a people of the world. We live by the word of God. So any area of your life where you want to see the possibilities of God, you find out you are a believer, you love God, but you're struggling financially. Stay with the word. Find out what does the word of God say. As understanding dawns, your faith will take a leap out of the dark. And as you begin to engage the principles of God, the power of God will begin to flow on your behalf to attract finances into your life. Channels will begin to open. You will begin to prosper in any aspect of your life where you want to see change. Engage the world. The world is an instrument of transformation. Find out the will of God. The world does not just tell you what God is saying. The word has the power to begin to effect the change and the desired transformation in your life. So we want to build our faith. We must give ourselves to the word. We must labor in the word. We must find out in any area of your life where you have received the light of the word, you will find out it's very easy for you to have faith. Some believers can easily have faith as far as money is concerned. But they will struggle to exercise faith when their health is concerned. Some people can have faith to walk, live a sanctified life. There are certain sins that other believers are struggling with, but they find out they are not struggling with that because they have been under the influence of the world and the light of the world has come as far as the works of the flesh in some regard is and they have gained some level of victory and mastery. But you can be holy and be poor. 
So God wants us to come under the full ministry of the world so that every area of our life is perfected. So that our faith is built in every area. So that in your finances, you are experiencing the blessings of God. In your health, in your career, in your family, in your ministry, in every area of your life, you come under the power of the truth. So as a believer, you must pay attention to the word, to every aspect of your life. Stay with the word and find out what does the word of God have to say about marriage. It's possible to be married and never fight. Some Christians don't believe that because the philosophy and the ideology of the world is what has powered your mind. So you don't believe that it is possible to have a violence-free marriage. It is possible to have a quarrel-free marriage. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Until your mind is renewed towards a possibility that exists in God, you will not walk in it. If you don't believe that the power of God can flow through your hand and heal the sick and raise the dead, you can be coming to church for 20 years if your mind is not being renewed as far as the workings of the Spirit within your vessel is concerned, you can be coming to church for 20 years and you will not see the power of God flow through you. Because you have not renewed your mind as far as that is concerned. You have not come into the understanding that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God lives in you. You have not come to the realization that like Paul said that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So you have become a mingled spirit with the Holy Ghost. Your spirit man has been mingled. So the abilities that are in the Holy Ghost can flow through the conduit of your human spirit and through your soul and your body and find the expression in your external environment it is knowledge Jesus said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover if you have not built your faith in that you are never going to be able to walk in that so everything about walking into the supernatural everything about stepping into the realm of the possibilities of God has to do with first the renewing of our mind coming into the understanding of the word of God that's how our faith grows so our faith grows through the knowledge of the truth Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free any area of your life where truth has come you will experience freedom you will experience liberty the oppression that other people go through, you will not experience it because light has come. Truth has come. Your mind is with you. You believe the word of God. If you are going to walk in the miraculous as a believer, you must first of all develop a miracle mindset. The Holy Ghost must renew your mind. And the instrument with which the Holy Ghost renew, renews your mind is the truth. is the word of God. Your mind cannot be more renewed than your understanding of the truth. So you see believers in certain areas they have victory. In certain areas they are struggling. They are oppressed here and they are making progress here. But significant aspects of their life are in bondage. Truth is very powerful. You can be born again and certain de demonic liabilities can be in your life. But you need to renew your mind. You need to understand what the word of God says. And then your faith comes alive. Faith grows. Faith thrives in the knowledge of God's word. You want to see possibilities? What does the word of God have to say about that? Any area of your life you want to enter into a realm of supernatural accomplishment, you must stay with the word. You must labor with the word. You must find out the will of God and renew your mind. And number two, prayer. The faith for supernatural manifestation. The faith for supernatural accomplishment. The faith for the realm of limitless possibilities. Is energized through prayer. For many people, people, prayer is just a means to make requests to God. But you see, prayer is bigger than that. Prayer is deeper than that. When you spend time praying, you are stirring up the divine nature of God inside of you. Your faith grows through prayer. 
in Matthew chapter 17, when Jesus returned from the mountain with Peter, John, and James, the Bible says a certain man came with a son who was oppressed, who was epileptic. And he began to say, I brought him to your disciples and your disciples could not cure him. And, and he was crying, Master, please heal my son. And Jesus said, bring him. And Jesus spoke the word. He bound the spirit. The spirit left the child. The young man was free. And the disciples came back later to Jesus and said, how could we not do it? Why? They had seen Jesus do that before. But at this point, they attempted it and it did not work. They said, Why? how why could we not do it? And Jesus said, Oh, ye faithless generation, for how long shall I be with you? He said, This kind goeth not out except by fasting and prayer. Jesus rebuked their unbelief. The reason why the demons could not be cast out was because of their unbelief. And now Jesus prescribe the cure for that unbelief. The cure to unbelief in your heart is connected to fasting and prayer. So fasting and prayer also helps to purify your faith, to strengthen your faith. When you find out unbelief is taking over your soul, pay attention to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to fasting. Say so this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. There is something that prayer does to the believer. Prayer energizes the spirit of the believer, especially when it is added with fasting. So a believer wants to grow his faith, pay attention to prayer. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. He said, he that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. He that prays in an unknown tongue edifies himself. He that prophesies edifies the church. You see, my focus there is that when you pray in tongues, according to the scripture, you edify yourself. What does it mean to edify oneself? The word here is the word to build up. To build up your spirit. To energize your spirit. If you check, check it in your lexicon, the word for, for edify there means to build up. To build up like an edifice. To cause your spirit to grow. It means to grow in wisdom. To grow in grace. To grow in the virtues of the spirit. To be transformed. So when you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost, you are stirring up the divine nature within you. You are developing the capacity of your spirit. Jude 20 is a building up yourself in your most holy faith. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying the Holy Ghost is not a, a, you know, just a group of Pentecostal people or a 21st century practice. No. It is a technology in the spirit by which we activate our inner man. By which we energize our spirit. When you spend time praying in tongues as a believer, you are doing something to your inner man. You are strengthening your spirit. You are strengthening your spiritual capacity. Praying in tongues will do what? Will develop your spiritual capacity. That's why I use the word prayer dreams. You are going through an exercise that will help to build your inner man. Build your spirit. Strengthen you with might from within. Paul said, I pray for you that you may be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. Praying in tongues gives us access to the strengthening of our inner man. It's not just enough to pray in tongues. You must understand what is happening to you and pay attention. The Bible says the early church, they gave themselves to the apostles' doctrine and to prayers. And I told you, I said it means they prayed all kinds of prayer. There were times they prayed prayers of warfare against the enemies of the church. There were times they prayed prayer of supplication. Prayers of intercession. There are all kinds of prayer that the Bible shows us. But the kind of prayer that makes for the building of your inner man is what I will call the prayer of edification. 
It's not just the prayer of you bringing a petition to God. No, you are spending time praying what? The primary purpose of that prayer is for your edification. Until you understand this kind of prayer and begin to engage yourself frequently in it, there is a measure of power and grace that you will never come into. Praying in tongues is a gateway to the supernatural. Any believer who wants to walk in the supernatural must make that his primary way of praying. I'm not saying you should not pray, you understand it. But you want to build yourself, especially in your closet, in your private moment. Pray more in the Holy Ghost than in your understanding. That's how you build your faith. That's how you stir up the divine nature of God within you. The power of God to make all things possible. That's how you do it. When Paul says you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. Another word for the word edify means to charge up. You know why you need to charge your battery. When your battery is, is down, maybe the battery of your phone or your car, you will not get ultimate performance. You can't use a phone that has a dead battery. It doesn't matter the, the, the possibilities that are in that phone. Even if it's an iPhone, when the battery is dead, it's more useless than somebody that has a 3310. Because at least with 3310 with full battery, you can make call. You can do SMS. But if you have an iPhone, it doesn't matter how sophisticated your phone is. If the battery is dead, it is useless. So there's so much capacity in the human spirit that many believers know. If you are going to walk in the supernatural, you must spend time staring your inner man. So praying in tongues is charging your spiritual battery. You are charging the battery cells of your spirit to the point where you hit full bar. And when you hit full bar, you know that there is no impossibility. I hope you know we are not all at the same level of faith every time. There are certain times that if you see a dead man, you can fall upon the person and say, arise. That's when your spirit has been charged sufficient enough. And you see, just the way you can use your battery cell contains your capacitors and you can store charges. When you charge your battery, it contains capacitors that enables you to do what? To store charges. That's how your human spirit is. Your spirit can store charges. Your spirit can store power for the appointed time of use. So you can spend time pray through the night, but maybe it's not the following morning that there's going to be need for that power that you have generated. But when there is need for that power, you are full power. There will be energy released for supernatural performance. Many believers fail. Many believers are weak. Many believers are oppressed because they do not understand this kind of prayer. So many times you go before God in prayer, it's not because you have a prayer request. It's not because you have a problem. If it is only problem that takes you to the place of prayer, you will never know God in certain measures. You will not know what the Holy Spirit can do in your vessel. Because you wake up in the morning, it's not a problem that should drive you. You go into fellowship with God. And there are times you should just lock yourself in the room. Maybe through the night, if you say you are too busy, just lock yourself, you are praying. It's not because you are asking God for a husband. It's not because you have house rent to pay. You are just looking at your life and you say, no, there is more to my life than meets the eyes. I cannot just walk through life as if I came to escort some people. There is a purpose for me to fulfill. That person drives you to lock yourself. You are pacing, you are seated, you are lying down, you are groaning, you are praying, you are generating power for use. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. He said to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Let me tell you, the things that God can do through you is according to the power that worketh in you. God is sovereign. Many times he comes through for you. But it's not going to be so every day. If you do not build your spiritual capacity, you can't just wake up when the devil shows up, you cry and say, God will understand, you will show up for me. One day you will allow the devil and say, in this kingdom, this is not how we walk. There's principle. 
you need to build your spiritual capacity. The Bible says, to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all you can ever ask or think. The possibilities of God in your life is according to the measure of power that you have generated. So if you have only generated 10 volts in your spirit, you can't wake up and say you want to confront an obstacle, a problem that is 50 volts. It's not going to work. The measure of power you have generated in the place of prayer is going to determine the kind of problems you can solve. You can't just wake up and say, I believe, I believe God. Many people think faith is just talk, confession. Faith is beyond confession. If your confession is not powered by divine energy, you will speak empty words that cannot produce. So if you are talking of stepping into the realm of limitless possibility beyond what happens in a four days meeting, a realm opens for you to step in. You must know how to energize your spirit. For he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You have become a mingled spirit. Every moment you spend praying and fellowshipping with him, his ability is flooding your human spirit. His power is flowing into your human spirit. So you may begin weak, but as you continue, strength is coming. Life is coming until your spirit becomes full. Then it can be true of you that when you speak to a man, mountain, it can move. Jesus said, have faith in God. For whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be that removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe in the things that he says, he shall have whatsoever he says. He didn't say whosoever shall tell God to remove the mountain. He said whosoever shall say unto the mountain, your, your, your ability to have the mountain move is dependent on what you have. If there is no power in your spirit, the mountain cannot move. So Paul said the possibilities of God is according to the measure of the dunamis that is at work within your spirit. Power is not power. Just like in the physical world, power is measured. In the realm of the spirit, power is also measured. You cannot use this small generator. They call, I pass my neighbor. You can't use it to power this church. It doesn't matter your good intention. It doesn't matter if you are powering it and you are crying. It will not work. Because the generator does not have the capacity to do the kind of work. You see, we're told in elementary science that energy is the ability to do what? To do work. You must generate energy in your spirit that is commensurate to the kind of works you want to see accomplished in your life. If you want to enter the realm of limitless possibility, you must build the capacity that matches the realm you are desiring. It's not enough to just desire. You see, as much as we can come to church under the anointed ministry of God's servant and God bless us, God delivers us, miracles happen, my brother and sisters, there will be time in your life that pastor will not be there. You are a young person, build your capacity. You are a sister, build your capacity. One night the enemy can come after your child and you call pastor's number. Pastor is also a man. He's tired, he's sleeping. He will not pick your phone. The realm that God wants to bring us is beyond a meeting. It's beyond service. It's a realm that he wants everybody to walk in. He wants us to build our spirit to the point where we can do mighty things for him. When you read the gospel, you read the book of Acts, you will find that most of the miracles were done outside the temple. That means we cannot just live our life and wait for church to do miracles. You should be able to collect crutches from a cripple on the streets. You should be able to stand in your family and say, no, 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 no. The devil has had a field day in my family for too long. And check the devil out. That's why God wants your capacity to be built. It's not just, faith is not just for you to receive miracles. Faith is also for you to perform that's why there's some there's a gift called the gift of the workings of miracle. You are the one working it by the ability of the spirit. 
and the workings of miracles is not limited to bodily healing. The workings of miracles can be in the area of finances where you can speak and ancient gates will be open. The treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places will be open. But you must build that faith because faith is a gateway to the supernatural for a believer. That's why Satan was seeking to, to, to sieve Peter like weeds. He wanted his faith to fail. You want to grow in the supernatural? You want to see the power of God changing things in your life, not only when you are in church. You step into your place of work, you have the authority, the crown of power upon your head to command change. We spend time praying. We pray in the Holy Ghost. That's the heavenly language of God. There is no man I know that walks in the supernatural in the power of God that does not pray in tongues. There's none. Because it's by praying in tongues that we stir up the dynamite that God has put within us. You can begin praying in tongues mechanically, but as you journey, suddenly the power of God is activated. One of the words that was used in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 for Building up is the, another word, embolding. So you say, he that prays in an unknown tongue builds up himself and emboldens himself. For the wicked runs when no man pursues him, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. There's a level of boldness. The audacity of faith is like a cloak that suddenly comes upon you. And when you look at the devil, you feel like tearing him apart. The spirit of faith comes upon you. For time shall fail us to speak of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of David, and of the prophet, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, escaped the edge of the sword, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. The Bible says, out of weakness they became strong. He said, the women even received their death back to life. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, you will see the limitless possibilities of faith. For by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. By faith, Moses refused to be called a son of, of, of the Egyptian. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, but seeing him who is invisible. By faith, they carried out the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. By faith, the Red Sea parted for the children of Israel to walk past. The Bible said the Egyptians are sailing to do the same were drowned. So you can see somebody is doing something by faith. You don't know what has activated him into that possibility. And you try to do it, you will drown. Faith. Faith comes alive in the believer through the ministry of the word and the spirit. And it is in prayer that the supply of the spirit is given to the believer. Paul in Philippians chapter 1 verse 19, he was in prison. He said, this situation shall turn for my deliverance. How? Through your prayer and the supply of the spirit. So when you have the, the logos of the world, you know what God has said. You begin to pray. You spend time praying. And as you pray, there is a sudden supply of the spirit. And the more you stay, the more your spirit is filled. The more the Holy Ghost fills your spirit and boldness comes upon you. And when you speak by the spirit of faith, the power of God is released to bring about the supernatural. Oh, Balakata. So you just lock your door. You are praying. Maybe they brought evil reports to you of something that is happening at home. You just spend time praying. You spend time praying. 
you spend time praying you spend time praying you begin to confess the word the spirit of faith begins to come over you when you get to that point where the mantle of faith has come upon you you begin to make decree when you want to change something don't just begin by speaking if you are not on full bar if your spirit is not high don't confront a challenge don't confront a problem stay in prayer as the energy of the spirit begins to saturate you you reach that tipping point in the spirit that when you begin to speak your words are galvanized by the power of god your words are suddenly energized by the power of the holy ghost to bring change that's how we change situations whether it is lack and want, whether it is sickness, whether it is a witchcraft activity around you, you spend time praying to a point where you are charged in the Holy Ghost. And sometimes it may take you days to pray to hit that point in the spirit. Sometimes after two hours or one hour, your spirit man come alive. Sometimes after 30 minutes, it depends on how much you've been engaging the Holy Ghost. You see, if you pray in tongues always and very long, your takeoff time in the spirit will be short it will be easy for you to break beyond the veil of the flesh into the realm of life your takeoff time will become short it will be easy for you to arise like something and stir up yourself and god will move in power this is the language of the new creation this is the language that God has given the new creation to communicate with him. In Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9, he said, I will restore to the peoples a new language and they shall call upon me in one accord. This is the language God has given all men, all tribes, all peoples to engage in. It is the language of the spirit that when you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost, not just in service, you build the habits in your life. The power of God begins to mantle you. Then you can speak to the mountains and command them to be uprooted. Can you lift up your voice and pray? Oh, the spirit of faith is here. The spirit of faith is here. It doesn't matter the mountain that is standing before you. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Can you charge up your spiritual battery? Can you generate power for change? generate power for change the earnest heartfelt fervent prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working is a multi-purpose power this power can make you prosper this power can infuse health into your body this power can break the yoke of the devil this power can infuse divine intelligence into your mind this is how men are changed this is how men are transformed the bible said jesus went to the mountain to pray and he took peter john and james and behold as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his garment became as white as the sun his raiment changed and there he manifested his glory to the disciples you want the glory of god within you to manifest we have this treasure in that vessel the treasure is the glory of god god said god will command that light to shine out of darkness has shone in our heart to give the light of the glory of God as it is in the face of Jesus now we have this treasure in this earthen vessel that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us you are a carrier of the glory of God you are a carrier of the glory of God the glory of God is locked in your human spirit where you spend and pray you are staring the divine you are sharing the power of God and all things become possible to you for if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you he shall vitalize your mortal body he shall quicken your body life is coming into your body he shall energize your body he shall give life to your body 
Jesus said it is the spirit that quickens it is the spirit that gives life until you pray hard and long in the Holy Ghost you will not know the quickening ministry of the spirit the Holy Ghost can quicken you he can give life to you he can cause you to mount up with wings you are generating power you are generating energies the ability to do work the ability to do the works of god they ask jesus what shall we do that we may do the works of god jesus said believe in god and him whom he has sent your faith is needed if you are going to walk the works of god we want to walk the works of god we want to dispense the divine ability of god we are carriers of his divine nature we are comrades partakers of his divine nature the power that raised christ from the dead is at work in us is at work in us is at work in us your energy level is changing your energy level is changing you are breaking forth certain levels of the manifestations of the spirit are opening tonight are opening tonight suddenly you find out the realm of faith the realm of the gift of healing the realm of the gift of the workings of miracles has been opened your spirit has stepped up to that energy level in god oh balasikaba in the next two minutes pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is an upgrade going on there is a supernatural upgrade going up in the spirit of man there is a divine release of grace into your spirit into your spirit hali abala side lega barata la suma baladi avando kobaba mandali abalo si lege legra dia son regida la gradia bada pray in the next three minutes the power of god is going to break out the power of god is coming upon some of you there is an upgrade in your spirit you are shifting levels in the Holy Ghost. You are shifting levels. You are shifting levels. Hey! Hey! We are partakers of His divine nature. We are carriers of His glory. Christ in us is a hope of glory. Christ! Christ in us. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me it is the holy ghost that energizes your spirit and bring you in the new levels of possibilities new levels of possibilities new levels oh 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 your capacity is enlarging is enlarging is a legend. Hey, 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 hey. Shata, ta, ta. Palia baraka. Palia babalata. Your capacity for divine works is a lot. Is a lot. Is a lot. Is a lot. Hey. Palia barando logodos. Veladia, veladia, veladia. Velia Kombe Mangregadiaba Ragia Baliado. I see a mantle of power. I see a mantle of power. The Lord is clothing you. The Lord is clothing you. The mantle of grace. The mantle of grace is coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. The spirit of faith. The spirit of power is resting upon you is resting upon you 
is resting upon you. I see the Holy Ghost taking people into new levels. New levels. I see a man stepping staircase, climbing staircase. And the Lord says, there is ascension. There's promotion in the spirit. There is an upgrade by the power of God. By the power of God. And right now as I speak, there are some of you that have been hungry for an upgrade. Right now, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, clothe them now. 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 Fire. There is a mantle of 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 fire. Hey! Higher! 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 Take it now! Take the fire! Take the fire! Take the fire! I see a garment of fire! A garment of the power of the Holy Ghost! Of the Holy Ghost! Tonight God is imparting the gift of faith, the power gift of faith, the power gift of faith is coming upon you, is coming upon you, is coming upon you, is coming upon you. Coming upon you. you will go out and do the impossible. You will do what you have never done before. You will do what you have never done before. Some of you will raise the dead. You will raise the dead. You will lift cripples from the wheelchair. The mantle of faith and power. Right now, at the count of three, it falls one, two, three. Touch, 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 touch. Fresh, 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 fresh. Garment of fire. Garment of fire. Garment of power. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Aya. 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 Seven spirit of God. Seven lamps of fire. Seven lamps of fire. Standing before the Lord. Seven lamps of fire. They are being released. They are being released. The gift of faith. The gift of healing. The gift of working on miracles is resting. Is resting. The audacity of faith will become a common place in your life. In your life. There are at least 12 of you. At least 12. As I speak now. That fire. That fire. That fire. Rest. 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 Touch. Touch. Jesus. Jesus. Everywhere. Everywhere. From the front to the back. From the front to the back. From the front to the back. There is an impartation of fire over there. Fire of God. Fire of God. Born. 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 Ah. I see the Lord pouring oil. Oil upon people. Oil of fire. Oil of fire. Oil of fire. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Move. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, ah, ah, psalmist of God, take fire, take fire, take fire, burn, 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 hey, I see that wildfire. I see that wildfire. Tonight the Lord is activating.
the spirit of faith the spirit of faith the spirit of faith the spirit of faith for the miraculous faith for the miraculous faith for the miraculous faith for the miraculous it enters you now it enters you now it enters you now it enters you now is it just said and the spirit entered me when he spoke unto me and set me upon my feet and set me upon my feet there are five of you to my right five of you the gift of faith the gift of healing is entering you now it's been activated take it now 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 yes 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 jesus 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 i see the lord holding the hands of people Taking them into deeper waters, deeper waters, deeper waters, deeper waters. Oh, you'll not be the same again. You'll not be the same again. You'll not be the same again. It's time to do business in deep waters, to do business in great waters. Grace is coming upon you. Grace is coming upon you. You will not be the same. The spirit of grace, the spirit of prayer comes upon your life, comes upon your life, comes upon you. Halabaria Kobe, Beli Abala Silegedi Abadas, Ayi Belegedi Abada. For he has broken the gates of brass, he has cut the bars of iron asunder. I see a gate breaking. I see the Lord break a gate to open. I see the spirit of breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lift up your hands, everyone. Breakthrough. Gates are breaking. Gates that have been shot. Gates that have been shot against your access in the deep places. Against your access in the deep places. In the Holy Ghost. The gates are open now. The gates are open now. The gates are open now. There is a new anointing coming upon you. It's time to run. It's time to run. It's time to journey. Hey. Hey. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. I have breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. Break through in the Holy Ghost. Break through in the Holy Ghost. Break through in the Spirit. He has broken the gates of brass. He has cut the bars of iron asunder. Gates are breaking in the Spirit. Demonic gates that have hindered you from joining to high places in God. The gates are breaking now. The gates are breaking now. The gates are breaking now. And as I speak now, that breakthrough anointing is resting upon people. That breakthrough anointing, help them. There is a breakthrough anointing, a breakthrough anointing in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. For this is Neot Irama. Neot Irama. There is an outburst of the prophetic anointing everywhere now everywhere now everywhere now born in ice born in ice born in ice take it now take it take it take it take the fire ah, 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 ah. there are two ministers to my left there is a prophetic fire that is coming upon your head as I speak. It's resting upon you now. It's resting upon you now. It's resting upon you now. Fresh.
fresh, fresh, fresh. Hey, hey, hey. Ha, ha, ha. There is a revival going on. There is an awakening going on. There is a revival going on. I see the fire of God. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. I feel the fire. I feel the fire. I feel the fire. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Revival fire. Revival fire. Revival fire. Revival fire. fire. From the back. From the back to the front is resting, is resting, is resting, is resting. Fire! Yes! Hala la batata. Brandia bolo. Zile. Legra di la bandia coba. Legra di la bandia sosaliga dai. Elia gabalata. There's a lady, I see a demon that comes to touch your head. I see a demonic migraine. A demonic migraine. As I speak now, the anointing is going to touch you. It's going to touch you. That your breaks. That your breaks. That your breaks. Lose her now. Lose her now. Lose her now. Ah. I will see someone with chains. With chains. We chase the fire of God, fire of deliverance, fire of deliverance. Touch that one, touch that one. Break the chain, break the chain, break the chain, break the chain. Loose, 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 loose. Break. Ah, aya. Aya, Aya, Aya. The Lord is raising warriors, 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 warriors. I feel a warring anointing. I feel a warring anointing. And the Lord says, I'm anointing prophetic warriors, prophetic warriors. As I speak now, let the fire, let the fire touch, touch. Touch, touch, touch. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. A realm in the spirit just open. Just open. Just open. A realm of possibilities. A realm of possibilities. Just open now. Just open now. Just open now. Hayabala dia baladadas. Shalala la 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 ba yagada da 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 das. Lord, let there be activation of graces. Activation of grace. Activation of grace. Activation of grace. In the next five seconds. In the next five seconds, let there be a supernatural upgrade, a supernatural upgrade, a supernatural upgrade, a supernatural upgrade, a new realm of possibilities. The things that you could not do, you are breaking into a new season. You are breaking into a new season, a new season, a new season. A new season, messengers of fire, messengers of fire. They are emerging from tonight. Alababa bakasata kabrantes. Aliababa ladadas. Some of you need to begin to visit hospitals. Some of you need to carry the fire on the street. You need to go out and cast out devils. I heal the sick. 
and deliver the oppressed and bring souls into the kingdom because something has come upon you tonight Aya 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 Jesus Thank you Jesus